like to invite you to please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love is no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> Sunday mornings were the favorite times in the house when I was growing up as a child. You see, my parents owned a retail hardware store that was open six days a week. So it was the only day that we were together. And of course, our tradition was, well, we'd get up in the morning and we'd go to church and we'd come back home. And you know, I am a southerner, so my favorite meal that mom would cook was fried chicken, mashed potatoes, and corn. My favorite, still to this day, my favorite meal. And it was interesting because one of the traditions that our family had is that we all read the Sunday newspaper. And what do you think our favorite part of the paper was? The funnies. Yeah, everybody wanted that section of the paper. And my favorite cartoon was Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown was kind of this symbol for all human beings that face trials and tribulations and all the hardships of life. Charlie Brown knows what it's like to carry his own cross. He knows what it's like to fail. He knows about trying and not succeeding. But he always was offered the good news through lioness. His good friend always helped him through the rough times. I'd like to share one little comic strip, if I may, from Charlie Brown. I want you to imagine outside there is Lucy sitting at a booth. And above that booth says, psychiatric help, five cents. Well, up walks Charlie Brown. And he asks her, I need help with a great truth. Tell me something about living that's gonna help me. She thought a moment and then she says, do you ever have to get up in the night and have a drink of water? And he says, yes, on a number of occasions I do that. She says, well take that glass, put a little water in it, dump it out. Because there just may be a bug in that glass. Five cents please. Poor Charlie. That wasn't quite the advice he was looking for that day. He realized as he walked away that great truths are even more simple than he thought they were. But he truly was looking for something more profound, looking for some help that would make some kind of sense about this bewildering life that he had to live. But as all of us, as we face life, and all the circumstances that we're going to face, our trials and our tribulations, Jesus tells us, we are not alone. He promises that he's always going to be with us, no matter what we face, no matter how hard it's going to be, Jesus is there. Well, our reading today from the gospel, that's kind of the final testimony that Jesus makes to his disciples. Because immediately after this, 
he is arrested. And of course, Jesus kind of raises the bar again for those disciples when he says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. As Jesus is loved by the Father, as Jesus loves us, we are in turn to go and love everyone else. Love everyone else as if they were our best friends. Pastor Carl Euling writes in an Osberg sermon series book the following about friendship. And I'm going to read this from Pastor Carl. You need not care about a friend, but you choose to do so. You are under no obligation to tell a friend how you feel, what you hope, what you've done, where you're going, but you want to share your life with that person, even as your friend will share in equal measure with you. A friend could walk out of the door of our life at any moment, but will not. Neither will you leave that friend. You would do anything for that person, and that friend would do anything for you. Friendship. Friendship is very precious. It's like a gem. It's like a prized possession that we hold on to for a long, long time. We are called by Jesus to be friends to all of those that are around us. We are called by Jesus to love one another. And it's kind of interesting because seven or eight years ago, there was a group of of Lutherans in town here. They got together at the Lutheran forums and they wanted to see if they didn't have something in common with one another. And so they decided that yes, there was. They all wanted to love their neighbor as their self. So that is when the very first Love Your Neighbor Day was started. Since then, we've had 14 of them. Less this last Saturday, not yesterday, a week ago, we had 250 volunteers that went out and helped people. And I mean, these volunteers got down on their hands and knees, and some of them even scraped the floors of the kitchens because they were so dirty. Or the windows that were just too high to reach for the elderly or to rake lawns, or to mow leaves. It was amazing to offer just a little help. You know, one of the people, uh, I had the privilege, you know, we offer every time we go out, we always ask our volunteers, when you're there, introduce yourself to the homeowner, get to know them a little bit, and if they allow it, offer them a prayer. And the most profound stories come back to us on how we've touched their lives. I had two people actually send me notes, and I'd like to share those with you today. The first one says, thank you to all of the volunteers for taking their time to work for others. They did a great job on my windows, which I cannot reach. Those volunteers have very big hearts and I can't thank them enough. Bless them for me. And the second one says, what a wonderful service you provide for people who need help. It's very hard to find people willing to give of their time. Thank you so much for all your help and God bless all of you, your friend. You know, it's kind of interesting to see how people are moved and touched. There is one woman that I have been to her house, I think, three times. Every time I go there, she wants her walls washed. They're painted with an enamel, and every year it's the same request, and she always joins us for lunch afterwards. And this past week, she says, Pastor Jody, Pastor Jody, and I went over and said hello to her. And she's a member over here at St. Anne's, and she says, Pastor Jody, when are you going to come and see me? 
I have a friend. I didn't know her before I started helping at Love Your Neighbor Day. But what a profound difference five hours of volunteer time can do in the course of a year. It's only five hours out of 8,760 hours in a year. That's not very much. And the difference we can make for people that are no longer well enough or no longer young enough to get down on their hands and knees and scrub their floor. We all gave a little bit of our time that day to go out and help those that no longer have the strength. And we attempt in our own way to be little Christ or to be like Jesus. To be like Jesus when we leave this space. I think the following story speaks quite loudly about loving one another and how we can be a Jesus figure for others. There was this large group of people that had been to a sales meeting up in Chicago. And there was a whole group of them that were getting ready to go home on the same plane. And they had all told their spouses that they'd be home for dinner. So these people were in that airport and they were hurrying and they were running. Well, one of them accidentally knocked over a table where a young girl was there selling apples. And the apples went everywhere. Well, all those salespeople, they just kept running. They didn't want to be late. They didn't want to miss their plane, all except for one. One man stopped, took a deep breath, and he felt a twinge of guilt, and he went back to that young girl, and he said, I'm so glad that I did, because there she was, down on her hands and knees, trying to search for those apples. He says, because you see, when I got back to her, I realized she was only about 16 years old. And she was blind. She was trying to grasp those apples that were scattered all over the place. She couldn't find them. She was softly crying. And so he gathered up all those apples and set up her table again and put them into two piles because he realized some of the apples had gotten bruised and the skin had been ripped. And he felt bad. He says, here, please take this $40 for your apples. I hope we haven't ruined your day. Are you okay? As the salesman started to walk away, the blind girl hollered out, hey, mister. And he turned around and looked at her. And she asked him, are you Jesus? It made him stop. It made him pause. Slowly he made his way to the flight, the later one, bouncing this thing about in his head and in his soul. Are you Jesus? Do people mistake all of us for Jesus? That is our destiny, is it not? To be so much like Jesus that people have a hard time telling us apart? Because this world is just filled with a lot of bad things. It's not filled. We are just blind to the love and the grace of Jesus. If we claim to know him, we are to walk and live and drive and talk and act as if we know him. Knowing him is a whole lot more than being able to quote scripture or being able to gather in this space. Living the word as your life unfolds, that's being Jesus. So you are, every one of you, you are the apple of Jesus' eye. Even though we too have fallen and we have been bruised, he stopped what he was doing and he picked every one of us up and he carried us up to that hill on Calgary and paid in full for our damaged fruit. Jesus said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Amen.